everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Talk with Ben podcast. And I'm so happy you decided to tune in, whether you're listening uh, in, the, in your car, whether you're just chilling at home, wherever you may be in this world. Uh, I really appreciate you tuning in and just listening to what I have to say. Hopefully it encourages you and you take away something from it. Uh, and if you're new, my name is Ben and this is my podcast where I talk about life, uh, the good things, the bad things, uh, and everything in between. And so I'm so happy you decided to tune in and it just so happens that this episode is going to be a little different than normal for my podcast. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I little just been thinking a lot, uh, the past, I don't know, four days or so, um, about what I was going to talk about on the podcast. And, uh, if you know me and you know, this podcast, you've been listening for a little bit or a while, you know, that I try to avoid, um, you know, getting into political debates or getting into, you know, things that, you know, are a very tender subject. And I'm not one to, uh, want to rile up people. Um, but I have really just been reading, I've been watching things, I've been reading things and, uh, just what's been happening back in America. I mean, obviously I'm here serving in Hungary. Um, but the news reaches here too. Uh, and it's, it's, it's quite sad. Um, it's, I, I honestly sometimes don't know where to begin. Um, when I'm, when I'm thinking about this and it's I, over and over again in my head, I've been like, what do I say? I want to come across as, as something that, um, is my thoughts, but it has some backing to it and, and really just the way I feel about the situation. And so I first want to come out and say that, um, by no means, and I mean by no means, is what happened to George Floyd even acceptable uh, in my brain. I don't care if you are uh, from the from this country. If you're not, if you're <laughs> if you're white, black, if you're Hispanic, if you're Asian, whatever you are, what happened was not right. I just want to start with that. The man was pleading for his life. And yet, for some reason or another, the officers thought that it wasn't either a big deal or there was just no there was no reason to help him because he was being detained. But regardless, there is there is no room for that. And you know, my heart hurts as a an American to see this. You know, we call ourselves the land of the free. You know, people come to our country to live out the American dream. It's hard to, it's hard for me to look at America right now and go, that's the American dream that people want to see. And I'm going to be the first one to admit that whenever these kind of subjects come up of, um, you know, someone in the black community that gets, um, killed or someone that gets, you know, um, treated poorly. A lot of times it kind of goes over my head and sometimes I just don't see it as, as the issue it needs to be. But for some reason, this one just ticked a little deeper. And I, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, I guess, grasp, especially being a Christian, grasp somebody poorly treating another human being because as we know god created us all equally we are all equal in his eyes we are his sons and daughters and to see what has went on in my country in a place that i call home is absolutely disgraceful and not just, you know, I guess not even just the idea of, you know, what happened to George Floyd. Um, not even just that. But what's happened after. Where there's no communication, there's no listening to one another. And I don't know what goes through people's minds during this. I, I don't know that. And again, I want to just be open and say that I am white. 
I, I, I haven't experienced what the black community has experienced in, in all the years, you know, but I can tell you that my heart still hurts for, for you all, for the community, but I have a hard time understanding why this community, these, this people that have been oppressed and the, and the, and the, and just the, the way they've been treated for centuries. I still don't grasp though, why we have to go and destroy our public buildings, our stores, those things. And I want to open up with all this because I, I want to go into more detail as, as the show goes on, as this episode goes on. But I wanted to open up by saying that I, I don't understand and I'll kind of go into deeper detail as we get on. But I, I, as you guys know, and if you're new to the episode or the podcast and you want to know, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say so. I'm serving as a missionary in, in Hungary and I want to go to the word of God. Um, I've actually seen this verse pop up a few different times for people that have been, you know, talking about this. Uh, a few different Christians that I know have been talking about this. And one of the verses from Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter one, verse 17, which says, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. It's our right to seek justice for George Floyd. We should be held, this man should be held accountable for what he's done, which as far as I've been reading, it's, it's going that way. But I, I don't understand. I don't understand how the answer to something happening to this, to this man for George Floyd being killed. I understand the protesting as an American. I believe in the freedoms that we have. We have some of the greatest freedoms in the world. And I, I, I am so for people protesting and standing up that I love seeing whites, blacks, Asians, Hispanics, uh, old, young coming together on a knee praying or just walking peacefully down the side of the road, holding signs up. All black lives matter, but in fact, all lives matter. But what I don't get, and just like I said earlier, what I don't get is how you can destroy the things in your community. How can you destroy those stores? How can you destroy the the police buildings and the, and the fire trucks and other stores I've seen as much as I've seen the videos of, of the different riots and the different protests. I've seen so many videos of, of, I saw one video of an elderly man yelling at a crowd saying, I fought for this. I've, I've fought so hard to get this far. I grew up in the same neighborhood as you. I grew up going through the same thing, if not worse. And I've seen that video after video. I've seen the the good people that have not only helped clean up, but have been there for the cops, gave them hugs. I see all these things that people are doing, and, and it begs me to ask the question, what help are you bringing to the cause? Riding all over, this, the, over the country, and in fact, all over the world. Again, I... Maybe I don't quite understand fully and, and please enlighten me if, if, if I don't understand correctly, but as a, as a teacher and as someone who works with children on a daily basis, is it not hard for you to watch a video of people breaking into target and stealing things? And you see these little kids helping out. Does it not break your heart to think we're trying to, we're trying to live in a society that is equal. We want to treat everyone equal. What are you teaching these kids? And I, and again, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. 
and maybe I'm just not understanding what's going on or maybe not fully, but as a, as someone who believes in a God that is almighty and all powerful and has created every single person with a purpose and who will not leave you nor forsake you. I feel like we should be fighting with love and protesting with love, not hate. And I know some might say it's easy for you to say you've never went through it and you're right. Maybe I'd be on a different side if it was the other way around. It's just so hard. And, and, and another, another verse that has come to mind, uh, it's not, I've also been able to see it. And I, it, it's, and I'll get to it in a second, but I think a big thing that I've been able to take away and, and as I've been watching videos, as I've been wa- uh, reading articles, as I've even been just trying to understand what's going on is that so many people just want people to listen, want people to understand, want people to be treated with respect and with dignity. And I think that is something that is lacking in our, not only in our, in our country, but in, in the world. I think it's something that is lacking, you know, all over the world, here in Hungary, in Asia, wherever. But I I do want to read this verse that has really just, I think, I don't know, I guess helped me understand a little bit more. And it's in, it's in James uh, chapter one, uh, verses 19 through 22. And it says this, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of, the, of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put o- away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But he, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I I love that passage of scripture because it's talking about listening and listening and and taking away our our anger and our hate and I know it's so hard. I was angry. I was angry to see the pain that it's caused so many people. And it's not just this. It's the pain that it's caused for years. And years and years. And and I and I wonder sometimes how as a country can we figure out how to live? How as a world can we figure out to figure out how to live with one another? And I think it begins with listening. It begins with white people understanding black culture and, and understanding who they are and understanding that they are, are a person too. And they have the same rights that we do. It's the same when it comes from normal people with understanding police officers, because I'm telling you this, and this is something I'm going to stand firm on is that not every police officer, I have friends that are police officers. Not every police officer is officer is like that one guy. No, (laughs) you can't convince me of that. There are a lot of police officers in this world that do above and beyond their job to make their communities better. So before you hate on police officers, maybe think about your life and think about maybe the impact maybe one of them have had. And maybe they haven't had any impact, but think about what they represent. And and maybe in your mind, they don't represent anything good. and, And I'm sorry for that. There are some amazing men and women out there that serve you every single day, the things you don't even see. But they are there to do what th- their job. And yes, yeah, some of them are not doing a good job. And some of them honestly should be fired. 
I honestly believe that anybody that believes the way that man believed with George Floyd, anybody that comes out and says, especially a cop that says, well, I don't see him doing anything wrong, should be let go of their job. But we need to listen. We need to understand each other. We can't go to violence. We can't go to go to hate. Where has that gotten us in the past? Let's look at history. And I'm pleading. And this goes out to the white people. And I don't care what your belief is. I am pleading you. Stop hating. On minorities. On Blacks, on Hispanics, on Asians, or whoever. Stop the hate. That goes the same with all races. Stop the hate. What is that doing to our country? Look around you. Do you want your children to grow up seeing this? Because I know I don't. It's tough to look and scroll through my social media and to scroll through different things in my life. And all I see is different people. But you know what hurts me the most? Different people saying different things. You know what hurts me the most, though, is seeing Christians being silent on the matter. Hello, fellow brothers and sisters, stop being quiet. Stop thinking that, oh, well, God's got this. Yeah, God's got this, but it's time to raise your voice. It's time for you to stand up for these people, for fellow Americans. It's time to stand up for your brothers and sisters. Stop sitting on the sideline and not saying a word. But live out what these words I've said. Stand up against oppression. The gospel is why we're here. The gospel doesn't pick and choose who it's for. God doesn't pick and choose who he wants in heaven with him. No, I'm going to quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That verse doesn't say for only white people. That verse doesn't say only black people. That verse doesn't say only for the smart people. Only for the the businessmen. No, that verse says for whoever believes in him. For whoever believes in him. So you want to know my, my final thoughts or my gathering thoughts from this whole situation. It's this. Number one, I believe that this was a very wrongful death and that I believe that all the cops at that situation should be held accountable and honestly should be put away for a very long time. Number two, I feel that I love seeing people from all different backgrounds, all different races coming together to protest. But what I have an issue with is when you have people that come to protest and you have people that are doing it peacefully and are doing it correctly, and then you have people who are tearing down their own communities in order to make a point Of what? And number three, we need to listen. We need to listen and to understand each other. We need to listen and understand our cultures. We need to listen and understand our beliefs. I don't care if you're Muslim, if you're Christian, if you're if you're a Buddhist, if you're a a Hindu, I don't care if you're a Catholic, I don't care what you believe in. Let us all understand each other better. Because I want you to be a part of America because you feel like you can be yourself in America. But if I'm honest, I don't know if we're there right now. And I don't, I don't know if we'll ever be there in the sense of welcoming everybody from every different culture. And, and, and I think we do do a decent job of that. But I think what we're seeing right now is so much built up frustration and built up hate getting unleashed because of one incident. That should tell us something. That should say, we are listening. We need to make a change. We we need to make a difference. 
And number four is this, is that God has sent his son to die on the cross for everyone's sins. Not just mine, not just my friends, not just my family, but for every single person from every continent of this world. He said, if you believe in me, you will come with me to heaven. What about that do we not understand? And Christians, we need to stand up. We need to stand up for our brothers and sisters. We need to understand other people. We need to understand other religions. We need to understand other cultures. But most importantly, when we see oppression and when we see hate and when we see these crimes that should not be committed, we need to stand up and we need to believe in what the gospel is and believe what, what God is. And that is a God of love. That is a God of, of grace. That is a God that is faithful to us all. Because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of opening up my newsfeed and just seeing hate and just seeing people getting just pushed away because of their belief systems, because of the way they look, because of the, the people they associate with. And I'm going to be the first one to say that I know I struggle in this. I struggle sometimes. I need to be less judgmental and more loving. That's what I need to be. I need to understand these different cultures more. I need to understand these different religions. I need to be better. But I can't do this by myself. I need God in my life and I need to focus on Christ and I need to dive deep in his word and take his word and apply it to my life. Because Friends, we live in a world that is filled with sin. We feel, we're, we're living in a world that is filled with hate and anger. We need to get on our knees every day and pray to God and say, God, help us. Help us be better for you. Help us to be better and nicer to each other. Help us to have faith in you and your plan. Please, God. And so I, I hope that you take this, this time that I, that I have shared and realize this, is, this has been very hard for me because I, I'm a guy that doesn't always, I don't want this to be a political or, or a type of show. And I don't believe this is political. I believe this is an issue of our humankind, of our, the way we are. So these are, these are my thoughts, and these are the things that I've learned and the things that I've tried to understand. And so if I'm, if I'm wrong in any way, let me know. If I don't understand something quite a way, I, I want to learn. I want to understand. I want to listen. So please, don't be afraid to just ask me a question or to, to help me understand, because I want to know. I want to learn. As I finish this time, I normally don't do this, but I, I want to pray. I want to pray for not only our country, not only George Floyd's, George Floyd's family, but I want to pray for this world. Let us pray. Dear God, I am ashamed to come to you sometimes and say, I don't like the way my fellow, myself and my fellow Christians sometimes treat people or sometimes act. We need to be better for you. But God, I, I pray for this, for my country. That we would stop hating. We would stop the violence. And we would just love like you love us. God, I pray for George Floyd's family. You don't deserve this. No one does. I pray for families of cops and all over the all over the U.S. that are are scared, are struggling, or just trying to show that they do love everybody.
They want to be there for their communities. I pray for them. God, I pray for our government, our government officials. They make the right decisions to get better at treating people with respect, to listen to their people, the people that have elected there, that they would listen and say, how can we make this situation better? God, I pray for this world. We're in a dark world. It's been one of the most different times of our known lives. Pandemic, and now this. So God, I ask that you challenge us, especially us Christians, that we will be the light in this dark world, that we will show love to everyone, that we will understand and try to understand everyone, and that we will listen to when people have an issue or we listen to when people would like to share something. Because you have listened to all of us. You have accepted us for who we are. God, I pray for my country. God, we are in a tough, tough time in our lives. There's so much pain and hurt in this world right now. And God, I ask that you intervene and you show how great a God you are. God, you are a God of grace. You are a God that is there, that loves every person that he has created. God, you are a God that is ultimately the person that we are trying to live for. So God, if there's someone listening that doesn't know you, I I beg, I pray that they would fall on their knees and say, God, I need you. God, I can't solve this world. I can't handle the hate. I can't handle what I go through on a daily basis, but I need you. Our world needs you. God, I pray for revival. I pray that that this would spark a revival in our nation, in our world, that they would come, people come flocking to you. And I pray that. God, thank you for being the God you are. Help us to be better and more like you every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, this is a time that we've not seen really ever. So I ask that as you leave, or if you stop listening to this today, that you truly consider where is your life Am I truly living for Christ? Am I truly living out what God calls us to do? And that is to love each other and to love our neighbors. Doesn't matter the race, doesn't matter religion, no matter, doesn't matter what it is. Are we doing that today? Are we living out our faith? Or are we just sitting on the sideline and watching all this happen? Stand up for those that are oppressed. Stand up for those that are not being treated equally and stand up for your faith. That's what we are called to do. So once again, I want to thank you for listening. I hope it touched you. I hope um, it's, it's maybe got you to think a little bit. If you enjoyed this podcast, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and favorite it on Spotify and iTunes. If you liked watching this on YouTube, go ahead and click that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell. So that way you can stay tuned to everything that comes out, every episode and every other thing that I do here on YouTube. So once again, thank you for listening. And I want to remind you that our God is faithful and that you can trust him. And as always, we'll talk next time.